Video Space. Welcome to Divine Christian Church, a Christian fellowship where we serve God in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 to 24. Praise the Lord. Let's open up in prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercies. We thank you for the Lord that we will be able to teach the word this morning for the Lord. We pray that you give us knowledge and understanding. We pray that you send the Holy Spirit to come here and take control of this teaching this morning, Father Lord, we we'll pray for those who are on their way, and for those who cannot make it, Father Lord, we we'll pray that you cover them all with the blood of Jesus, protect us, all these we ask in other messages we bring before thee, in Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've selected this topic, prayers, um, so that um, as individuals and as Christians, we'll begin to know why prayers are important to us. So sometimes people would like to ask, what are prayers? What does prayers mean? Please, when they say prayer, what is prayers? What do you understand by the word prayer? I just like individuals from the class to tell me what they understand by prayers. I think prayer is like communication between God and his um, children. So like uh, dialogue. Christians or not. Some people are not Christians, they still pray, for example. A prayer is just the God help me. And God still helps them because, because it's a loving God. Some of us who are Christians talk more with God. So the simple um, way for me to describe prayer would be communication between God and his people. Amen. Yes. As man of God has told us, prayer is a dialogue, it's a communication with God. We do this by praising Him, confessing Him of our sins, and therefore thanking Him and asking Him for our needs and desires also. Prayer also is communion with our Creator. When we pray, we engage in having fellowship with the Maker of the heaven and earth. So it is important. And as our man of God has said, it's a dialogue, actually. It's not a monologue. It's something that we have to, a two-way form of communication with the Lord. Prayer is also a way we communicate with God. As mysterious as it might seem to talk directly with the Almighty. It's another way we talk directly with the Almighty God. The Bible assures us that prayer is a two-way conversation. And therefore, between God and us, God made sure that humanity has this opportunity to tell him our concerns and our worries and our requests also. So it is important that sometimes we look about the definition of prayer. What prayer is a personal communication or a petition addressed to God, the deity, and especially in the form of supplication, Adoration, praise and worship is another method where people use that through prayers. We have testimony, Joe, and the um, praise and worship team. And we have sometimes hymns, songs, like, um, yeah, there's a song, I think, um, which we normally sing in our hymns. And when that comes to my mind, I will. Um, bring that up. It also says, the practice of prayer, prayers is a solution to human problems. And we have this song called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs we give to bear. 
all because we do not carry so everything in God in prayer. So that is another way we can sing and pray. A form of devotion spent mainly holy praying in the morning. Also, morning prayers is very important. Contrition, full of guilt or regret, remorse. That is part of the word which has been used in terms of working the nation of prayer. Contrition, full of guilt or regret or remorse. Asking for a, something, a sense of shame or guilt. When you have this guilt, you are asking honestly. You are asking. And supplication also, the definition there is the action of asking or begging for something honestly. So it is important here that we begin to ask honestly. Supplication also means, therefore, you humbly on your knees, you bow down on your knees um, through prayers. So the question is, what is prayer? Prayer is nothing more than a conversation between human beings and God, and it is a dialogue according to what Pastor said earlier on. And it is not only a dialogue, but it is also a conversation between prayers must be a two-way form of conversation with ourselves and God. It is not a dialogue. It is not a monologue. Monologue probably is only one person talking to yourselves probably. But you have to communicate with the Creator. You have to communicate with God. So that is why it is a two-way conversation between ourselves and God. And prayer also generates power. It is like a spiritual generator, especially we, we back from <coughs> Nigeria and Ghana and all these countries. We have a generator that gives us light in our houses. So it is more or less like a spiritual generator which generates light. And the more power it generates, the more it brings. Therefore, it is a, a generator which generates the power of God in our lives. The bigger and larger the generator, the more itself it generates light in our lives. So it is important, brethren, that we know how important prayer is. Let's try and look at a few scriptures and see what prayer tells us about. The first one is taken from the book of James. James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 13 to 18. It says, meeting specific needs. If anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil and the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effective, favorite prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So we see here what the book of James is telling us. James is telling us to confess your sins to each other and pray for one another. Sometimes we tend to only pray for ourselves, but it is important that we pray for one another. It is very, very important here so that you may be healed. You also have to pray. The earnest prayer also of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So it is also good for us to pray. People who want to accomplish a lot of things in life must have a large appetite for prayers. So it is important that if we want to accomplish a large appetite in life, it is good for us to have prayer. Pray. So prayer helps us. It accomplishes a lot of things in our lives. It changes us. There are quite a lot of issues I've had in the past where sometimes I lose my job. Sometimes I lose my parents. And through prayers, there are a lot of things that come through for me. So in terms of prayers, you can get good transformation, miracles, transformations, testimonies can happen without prayers. Therefore, it is very important that we need to pray. Prayer is very, very important in our lives. We have to take the word of God 
also very, very serious, especially when we pray. The Bible says the effective prayer of the righteous makes tremendous powers available. And if we look at a few scriptures here, it will tell us about prayers. The first scripture here is taken from the book of 1 John 5, 14 and 15. That's Peter. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. It's a confidence, compassion and prayer. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked in him. So what is that scripture we are trying to tell us, please? And this is the confidence we have in him. That he hears us. And if we ask for anything according to his will, he will give us. Pastor, can you tell us anything about that scripture? First John 14, 5, 14 to 16. I think what I understand the Bible is telling us here is that we have to pray and try our best to pray the will of God. So this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will. So in other words, it means some prayers that we pray may not be the will of God. So first John is talking about praying the will of God. It says if we pray the will of God, then God will hear us because we are asking something according to his will. So uh, maybe we, m making sure that when we're praying, we're praying the will of God rather than just uh, praying and taking chances. Before. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we have to pray within the will of God. It's very, very important. There are some people who sometimes pray for the wrong motives. Here yeah, we have to do something which is in line with the will of God. I say we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us, when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. If you're a Christian brother or sister, sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray. And God will give us this personal life and therefore the sins that leads to death. So it is important, brethren, that we pray within the will of God and not out of the will of God. And therefore, he answers our prayers. He answers our requests. So it is important, brethren, that we begin to go according to the will of God and do the things which he expects us to do. If we look at also another scripture there, it tries to tell us about prayers, what we do. Hebrews 4, verse 16. Hebrews 4, verse 16. Hebrews 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, and we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the need. So let us come boldly in front, as is the word is telling us, boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, that we may obtain mercy, that we may obtain grace. It is important, brethren, as Christians, we have to. We have to. It is important so that we can obtain mercy, we can obtain grace. It is important, brethren, that we come boldly as Christians. We come together. We come together, we come together and have mercy and have grace. It is important that we do that as Christians. It is important that we demonstrate this as Christians. It is important we do come together and actually pray. It is important that we do all these things. And when we come together, it helps us. I'm just looking at another version and see what it says here. 416 says, Let us come boldly to the throne of gracious God. There we will, we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. We will always find grace to need it. And when we need it most. So it is important, brethren, that we begin to see how prayers are important in our lives as Christians. We have to come boldly before Christ. We have to come before His grace. And it is important that we pray 
So now we're going to talk about the inhabitants of prayers. What are the hindrances to prayer? What actually stops us from praying? One of the main important things about stopping us from praying or the doubts we have in prayers is one of the things we have in prayers is because the Bible says without faith, when we lack faith, it is impossible to please God. So therefore, as prayers, it is important, brethren, that we take prayers very, very serious in our lives. It is important that we see how prayers helps us in our lives. For those who are just joining us, we have just been going over prayers, why prayers are important in our lives. And therefore, we've decided to describe prayers as the communication with God. It is a kind of, according we asked what prayers was, and the pastor said, it is a dialogue. It's a communication. It's a two-way communication with our God Almighty. He helps us, and we therefore it's a way of communicating. Asking him for our needs and desires also is communicating with God and by through praising him and confessing him for our sins also. Some people use the word supplication, some use the word contrition. Supplication is more or less an act, action of asking or begging for mercy. Sometimes you beg down, go down on your knees through supplication. And also sometimes we ask for thanksgiving. Thanking God for our many blessings, for our health of and our children. And petition also is asking for something or through healing and other things. So we've gone through that and we are talking about the importance of prayer. Prayer is nothing more than a conversation between human beings and God. And it's a dialogue and it's also not a monologue, but it's a dialogue between ourselves and God. And prayer generates the power also. And it's a spiritual generator which generates power in our lives. And it is more or less like, as I was giving an example earlier of me from Africa, we have generators. The more it brings power, the more we see light. And that is how the bigger and the larger the generator, the more area the power will generate light. And there we also looked at three scriptures, which is on the book of James. The scripture we looked at James there was James. Sorry, yeah, it was James chapter 5. James chapter 5, which was 16 to 18. And we've covered three areas there, 16 and 18 there tells us, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man reveals much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain and earth. So here we see the book of James is telling us how important prayers is. It says when you pray, you pray and eat for, we have to pray for each other. It is very important that we pray for each other, not only for ourselves. And it also tells us that when we pray, it produces us tremendous results. The prayers of a righteous man avail is not, and a great power produces wonderful results, especially the intercessory prayers that we have sometimes that happens in the intercessory prayers that this is the half where you meet and you pray for one another, not only for yourselves, but you pray for the church, you pray for other things. And the book of James that tells us the Bible says the effective and effectual prayer of the righteous man makes tremendous powers available to all of us. So it is important, brethren, that we look at how prayers are. And then we also looked at a scripture here, which is taken from the book of 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And there is telling us the confidence we have in him. 1 John 5, 1 John 5, 14 and 15. First John 5, 14 and 15. It says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask and whatever we have, the petitions that we have, ask him for. 
So this is the confidence we have in him that anything we ask for, he will hear us. But we don't have to ask for things out of, out of the will. We have to specify our prayers through the will of God and not out of the will of God. If you ask for the wrong things and the wrong motives, it will not really help us. So it is fundamentally important that we ask things within the will of God. And there are a lot of people today who pray for the wrong things. They don't ask anything within the will of God. And therefore it has a detrimental effect on us as Christians. It is also important for us to look. We also looked at another scripture there. Somebody read that for me, please. Sorry, Hebrews 4 verse 16. Sorry about that. Hebrews 4 verse 16. 4 verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of, of grace, grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Let us come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may attain mercy. So it is important together that we come together boldly and to obtain mercy in front of his throne. So it's important, brethren, as Christians, we come boldly in front of him and have mercy. Has anybody got any input to that scripture, that sister? Comfort of just read. What is the word they are telling us? Hebrews 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. We have to come boldly in front of him. We have to. We have to. And it is important, brethren, that we do the right things there. And according to what the word they are telling us, is that let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Therefore, we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need that. We will always find grace to give you that. So we have been talking about prayers. What are the actual problems? Why do you think today as Christians we don't want to pray? What are the hindrances? What are the things that you think that stops us from praying? You are a Christian. You come to church. You listen to the word of God. You read the Bible every day. They tell you the truth, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But still, you still don't want to pray. So what are the hindrances? What are the problems? Why do you think people don't want to pray? What are the, yes? People don't want to pray. I think it's how prayer has been perceived and taught. Um, a lot of Christians, they don't believe in prayers. I don't think no. I don't think they don't believe. People don't believe mm -hmm. in prayers. I think it's the perception of prayers, and also we have an adversary who is also doing everything to prevent us from praying. So I think you have maybe two sets of people: the ones that don't believe in prayers. And so uh, if we're talking about believers, I think every believer believes in prayer mm -hmm. and they want to pray. But we have an enemy who is constantly bombarding us. We have the cares of the world. We have influence, external influences. We have you know, busy schedules. We have that. And then we have another segment where I feel that um, is the way we've been made to perceive prayer. Prayer is sometimes perceived as a chore. For most Christians, it's a chore. They find that like when you hear people saying, if, if you pray more than if you less than an hour, if you pray, that, that means your prayer is nothing. Those things scare people. We have to teach people to know that prayer, as you said, is a dialogue, it's a conversation. You can pray 20 times a day. It doesn't have to be an hour. If you can you can be sitting somewhere on the train and you are praying, and it can be five minutes. And that five minutes is effective. You can be sitting, excuse me to say, on the toilet, you are praying, your bathroom, you pray. But I think we have made it in such a way that people feel that, oh, three hours I have to be at one place to pray. And it, it sounds a lot. And they're like, my conversation, what am I going to be telling God for three hours? I don't know whether you understand me. So I think we should, we have to explain to people, everybody has got grace. The amount of hours that you pray with your God may not be the amount of hours that I pray. It's grace and it's, it's different, um, how do you call it, grace and relationship intensity, intimacy. 
And we have to let people know that you need to pray. Prayer is a necessity. If you are if you're a Christian, you don't pray, then you are open to the enemy. But it's how we have to teach people. Just because you can pray six hours in a, at, a, at a goal, doesn't mean that the other person has, has to pray six hours at a goal. But if we say that, you know, talk to God, just like how you would be talking to me, just like how you would be talking to your friend, your brother, your mother, your parent, you talk to God that way. Find, create an atmosphere. You always talk to God. He's always ever ready to listen. It can be 30 minutes, but it's very effective. It can be even 10 minutes, but extremely effective. So it's, it's, I think that is what the issue is. And with, with a lot of people, they, they go, they pray, they Father, thank you, and they are stuck. When I was a baby Christian, I, I, I always say this. When I used to go for prayer meetings and I used to see, I don't know, Pastor, I'm not sure you remember, Brother Doctor, do you remember him? Living spring. Living spring. So the, the wife of the praise of worship leader, she was this tiny lady, he was very tall. Yes, do you remember him? Yes. When he prays, the whole place standard. <laughs> Baby Christian, I'm not joking. And I used to sit in a um, um, uh, uh, midweek service, prayer meeting, and everyone, I'm looking at people because I have already said, thank you, Jesus, and I'm sitting, I've got nothing else to say, you know. And then I used to look at him and think, God, I want to be like that, you know. But is that what, is that right? You want to be prayerful, but I didn't understand the dynamics of prayer. But the desire to pray and every day asking God, I want to, I want to be prayerful. I, this is what I want, and I, I never miss the prayer meeting. You see, so it's step, but we let people know that you, it's prayer is not a chore. It's a desire. It's you wanting to talk to God. And, and it, it builds up from there. We all start, everybody have their prayer method. Just like how you have your relationship with God is different to that my relationship. How you approach God is different. You might find it comfortable to kneel. I might find it comfortable to be lying down. It's all good. As long as we are praying, as we said, within the will of God, and we are coming to him through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, come boldly. Boldly means, you are, you are, when I'm going, I'm coming to you, uncle. I'm bold because I, you, I know you love me as a Christian Amen. sister. And I love you as a Christian. There's no friction between us. So even if I need something, I come boldly. Oh, Uncle TJ, can you please help me with it? That is the boldness. A child will go to her mother boldly, no, uh, no fear, no nothing, you know, nothing. So that is how, and we have to understand that we are coming to our father. He wants us to come boldly as a child, as an heir, mm -hmm. as a prince, as a queen, as a princess. You're going to him full access, no hindrance, and believing that as you're going to him, he has grace, abundance of grace and mercy to give us. So that's what they, and we have to believe that, that there is grace before God, there is mercy before God, and the enemy should not entice us or make us think that we are sinful and that when we go to God, our sin or whatever will not make him give us what we need. So we have to first establish a relationship, believe that when we go to him, he hears and he answers us. Amen. Amen. That's Praise the Lord, yes. We have to believe that anything we request from him, and that's the confidence we have in Jesus. But there are lots of issues why people sometimes doubt praying. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So one of the reasons that sometimes people don't want to pray is their faith. Their faith is very wavering. They are very weak. We have to have faith that if we believe, according to what you said earlier on, if we believe that anything we ask the Lord for, he will give us. So sometimes a lot of people don't know. We cannot get answers. A lot of people say it is impossible to please God. If we do not attach faith to our prayers, we cannot get answers. So it is important that we begin to pray. Because the book of Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us it is impossible to please God without faith. No, it tells us that uh, without faith, sorry, it is impossible to please God. So if our faith is very, very weak, then alternatively we will not like to pray. Sometimes we will feel that when we pray for certain things, we will not achieve that. But it is important, brethren, that we take 
the word of God very, very serious in terms of our faith. Our faith has to be strong. Let's look at the scripture and see whether it will give us some ideas about praying. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. He said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guide your hearts and minds as you live in Jesus Christ. What do you understand by that scripture? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray for everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience the God of peace. Can anybody elaborate on that scripture? Let me go on the King James Version and see what it says. Amen. Be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. What do you understand by that scripture, Sister John? Amen. Through your requests, supplications, bending down on your knees, asking for the request of God, your actions, He will listen to you. It is important that we have to pray. We believe. And it tells us there again, there's another word there. He uses peace, the peace of our hearts. We can never get any peace better than the peace of God. You may go into a war zone where there are other things and your heart will not be at peace. But the peace, the heart of the peace from God is very important in our lives. It comes first. I don't know whether Pastor would like to touch on that scripture as well. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guide your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Um, yes. I think it's, it's um, intuitive. So God said uh, we should not worry about things. We should cast all our burdens on him. So in terms of whether that is correct or not, of course it's correct. But I think what I would probably need to ask is do we actually do that? <laughs> So in terms of whether it's correct or not, I mean, nobody can force this is true. So, but do we be, every time we have any we need, we just say, oh, good, I'm very calm. So if we don't do that, I, I don't do that in every occasion. That sometimes I get a bit concerned. Um, and the, the question is, in those situations, how do we solve that problem? For me, when it gets to that point, I just find a way of retreating, find a way of So we must, in terms of that case, we cannot do that case. We cannot God is willing to take the burden of us. But again, as Christians, we just need to ask for the grace because it takes grace. Um, this any man should boast. So yeah, cast all our bodies upon him because he cares for us. Um, and then ask him to give us the grace to remember this that uh, Matthew 28 verse 20 said, Lo, he does always even in the end. So when we go to Another inhabit all as well, what prevents us from praying sometimes is sin. A lot of people have sin. And according to John 9, that's when he tells us God hates sinners. He doesn't listen to sinners. 
Romans 3 23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life, the uh, gift of God is eternal life. And I think 3.23 also tells us about, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So it is important, brethren, that we stop sinning. He says, he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. If we are sinners, he will not be able to. So it is important, brethren, that we stop sinning. John 9.31 there. John 9.31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. God doesn't like hear sinners. I can remember this um, man who was my manager sometime. He was a pastor. Well, a reverend man. I think he said he was going to church one morning with his, they wear their reverend gowns. And he said he met this chap on the road when he was going to open the church. And the man told him to pray for him because he has killed someone. That sounds like it's very, very strong. So I asked him, what did you do? He said he had to pray for him. But I was thinking if I was him in his position, probably I would have prayed for him. Whilst they are praying for him, at the same time, I would arrange for them to call the police to come and get him. <laughs> but, you know, so sometimes when you look about the sin you commit, when you take somebody's life, and then you're asking them to pray for you. God doesn't like sinners. He doesn't hear. So it is important, brethren, that we try not to sin. Sin is wrong. It is bad against Christians. We have to live a holy and sanctified life. And the book of Galatians, we won't have time to go through that, but the book of Galatians is always what I use as a navigator for Christians. Reverend. Dancing. I told you about this chap who is a very, very holy guy in the other church where I sometimes go and do my Sunday school lessons. He was telling me, Brother TJ, I stopped to go out to clubs. That's the day I went to this club, and after that, that was by the end. That he went down there, and there were some people who came in and they didn't want to pay their gate fee. So they told him, you have to go out, man, that everybody here has to pay for their gate fees. This guy went back out and came back and brought a gun and was shooting. And the guy said he had to bend down, that if he didn't bend down, the bullets would have gone. So he said, because they were queuing up to get into the place. So these are part of the ravings the Bible tells us. Don't rave, don't go to the areas. And since then, he will have lost his life. Because when these bullets we are going through it. All of them bent down. He said, if you didn't bend down. So it's funny, but it's very, very important, brethren, that we have to listen to the word of God. And if we pray without the applicable scriptures as well, that also affects us. It's always good when we pray. We use the applicable scriptures. That will help us. Especially, we look at the scripture, Isaiah 55. Can somebody read that for me? 54 verse 14. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Amen. Amen. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression. You shall not fear, and from no terror will come near you. When we say our prayers to God, sometimes we have to quote some of the scriptures. In righteousness we shall be established before the Lord. We shall be far from oppression. No evil will come. Psalm 91 also tells us about all these things. But it is important that we sometimes apply the applicable scriptures. If we don't apply the applicable scriptures, it will not. We also have to try and make sure we use this. And when we say, no terror shall come near me, we continue to pray that we believe in God. In righteousness we shall be established. And there will be no oppression. Nothing will come near us. There will be no hindrances. There will be no things that will affect us. So it is important. Another scripture there is Isaiah 55, verse 11. 5, verse 10, sorry. The next scripture, 55, verse 10. Verse 11, please. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I see, and it shall prosper in the things which I send. Amen. 
Amen. And so shall my word that goes out of my mouth shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish things. This is important. Can anybody elaborate on that scripture? So shall my word that goes out of my mouth shall not ret will return void, but it shall accomplish. Yes? Void, it shall accomplish what we are asking for. It is very, very important to not remain void. Where something is void, we know what it is. So it is important that the word of God is very, very important. It is accomplish something in our lives. Can I ask you? Yes. Is there, um, this is to all of us a question. Is there an instance where the word of God can become void in our lives? According to what? Telling us there that um, it shall accomplish anything. The word of God will never become void in our lives. It will always, always change our lives. It yeah, will always accomplish. If you stand on the word of God and you pray, some people would say, Well, I used, I prayed, I, I, I prayed with this word, but it still came to pass, whatever it was. So, is it possible that it can be? I'm not saying that the word itself is void. But in our lives, can the word be void in our lives? Any answers to that? According to me, I don't think it will, be, it, will, it will accomplish the good things we request for. It will always change our lives. It will always bring transformation. It will always bring miracles. It will always bring testimonies in our lives. So it will never, it will always accomplish the best things in our lives. I don't know whether anyone can answer that question. Yes, answer. I think that is the word of God is also the application of the word of God. So if we apply the word of God appropriately and in the appropriate circumstances, it produces. But as long as we also apply the word of God outside the appropriate circumstances and it need not produce the result. And also, there is also a time to sow and a time to reap. God answers prayers in a way. So sometimes the way we expect God to answer prayer may not necessarily be the way God wants to answer the prayer. We can ask God this particular prayer and we expect Him to answer that prayer in that particular way. But God, have, God is not limited by choice as how He can answer our prayers. Um, but eventually, in as much as we are praying and we are applying the word in the appropriate way, the word of God is infallible. Again, it goes towards 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to the will of God, He hears us. So sometimes we need to ask ourselves, although we are praying the word, are we actually praying the will? So that that is the we may be praying the word, but we may not be praying the will. It's the will of God. So the, the word, the will is more specific situation. And the will agrees with the word of God. But the, but the will of God is the word of God that talks about as it relates to a specific situation. So sometimes what we think is the will of God may not be the will of God. So I pray the word of God and say, this is the word of God. And it is the word of God, but not the will of God. And sometimes what we think is the will of God may not be the will of God. So that is the game. If you want to take it to another level, that is when we get to start making inquiry prayers. Again, we don't want to even know about explore this one because the Bible says, God said we should pray with supplication, all kinds of prayers. So that that sometimes we just need to focus on praying about God, your will. And sometimes praying answer to the will of God 
you may not cope with me like that. Myself is an example. When my mom was praying for me to become born again, I didn't become born again overnight. And every time, sometimes after praying, we came carry our cigarette while smoking as an adult. <laughs> and even as an adult, I'm smoking my cigarette. My mom sees me as a sinner because I'm smoking cigarette. So he prays all that prayer, and I'm coming from, come and visit her. When I was an adult then, I left my cigarette, and I'm still smoking and smoking. She will probably say, How come instead of seeing somebody speaking in tongues, this guy is smoking cigarettes? Then you open your staff to, to make matter worse for God that you're drinking it. <laughs> but he is the one that was expecting that because he has prayed, she has prayed, then the, the, when the boy, when this boy comes, it's like fire, calling down fire like a Niger or man camel. But this guy is taking good and smoking cigarettes. So he will probably think, does God answer prayer? But I remember before my mom passed away, I would go to her room, I would be praying, she would be crying. Yeah, she did cry, because I would pray and pray and pray, and when I, I get there, and I'll do midnight prayer, and stay almost six, seven, two hours a night, I can pray by myself. And she would come and look at the door, say, God, am I dreaming? But when she was doing those prayers, and those prayers didn't come, uh, it was the will of God, this time, for God to change things. So sorry, that is not a long word. Amen. Amen. Any more to that? I was trying to equate this question you've asked to um, Isaiah 43, verse 26, and James 4, verse 3. Isaiah 43, verse 26. See, put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. So God is saying that we must put things in remembrance, that we should pray together, pray and put in the right scriptures. We should always put things in front of him. So it is important, brethren, that we do the right things. And then James 4, verse 3 there, because we are running out of time, we'll try to close down. James 4, verse 3 there tells us, we shouldn't be praying for the wrong motives, praying out of the will of God, and therefore, when we pray out of the wrong motives, then our prayers will not be answered. James 4, verse 6. Can somebody read that, please? But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists, resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Amen. There's a 4, verse 3. Sorry, again. See, if you ask and do not receive, because you do ask amiss, that you may spend it in your pleasures. So therefore, there is telling us as well that if we ask for the wrong motives, if we ask for the wrong things, which are out of the will of God, and when you ask and you don't get it because your moves are wrong, it will always affect you. Sometimes you are praying because somebody has hurt you, somebody has offended you, and you're asking God to kill this person, or for this person to have an accident, or for this person to, to suffer because they've upset you, they've done something wrong to you. Therefore, your prayers will not be answered. You have to pray for something within the will of God, something which is appropriate. I know a lot of people pray, please, I want to be rich, and I want to have a big mansion, I want to have a big house, or I want to have a lot of money and cars and stuff like that. I don't know whether your prayers will be answered in that moment. <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes you have to pray within the will of God, something which is good, something which will help us. So it is important, brethren, here that we pray. I know we are running out of time. Next time when we meet, I would like us to answer the question, how to pray? How do we pray? We have a lot of hypocrites who go out down there and begin to show that they are praying. But it is important as Christians that when we pray, the word, we have a model for prayers. The Bible tells us how we have to pray. You can't just be repeating one thing all the time and saying, I want this and I want that and I want that and I want this. You have to try and follow a method. And when you pray also, it's good for you to pray for one another. 
not only pray for yourselves. Try and do the right things. And if the prayer is outside the will of God, therefore, as we've said, it will not help us. It is good for us to pray consistently and pray according to what the will of God has given us. So we are going to close that now because it's almost about 10 o'clock. And then when we come next time, we will look about how to pray and then the benefits of prayer. And we will see how we can go through that. So, Sister Cobot, can you close that in prayer for us, please? Yes, please, sorry. I didn't see you. Okay, um, you guys, you just said how to pray. But I believe that we can't just pray up to ourselves. It's the Holy Spirit that will lead us. And if, when I want to pray, when I'm praying, I always want to start after the cleansing or something like that. Then I say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to pray today. Because you want to pray within the will of God. So I think that when we have the Holy Spirit to lead us, to tell us what to pray and how to pray today, then I don't think we will go on this. And as we pray within our spirit, we will drop the things that we should be praying about. When he talks about how to pray, the Bible tells us in Matthew, chapter 5, the model of prayer. It says, verse 5 says, When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men assuredly and say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees you in the secret will reward you only. So there is telling us that we have to have certain areas where we pray. It's good for you to close your door. Close your room. Go into your pardon? I wasn't talking about the places. Oh uh, the places, okay, yes, okay. How you pray? Yes, yes. I agree with what you say in that sense. But sometimes some people, when they pray, they like to let people know they are praying. I think it's always good for us to isolate that. So let's close down in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to learn your word this morning. We pray that we will begin to learn how to pray. We pray that we will begin to understand the benefits of prayers. We pray that when we pray, let our prayers be accomplished. Let it be received in your name, Father Lord. We pray, for the Lord, that we continue to have the benefits of prayers, Father Lord. I will pray that what we have learned this morning from the lessons, Father Lord, we pray that we will not continue to sin, but pray, Father Lord. We pray that we do not pray for the wrong motives, Father Lord. All this we ask, Father Lord, and other messages we bring before thee. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercies. We thank you for this opportunity to be here this morning. We pray that you give us the grace and mercies to do your work this morning, Father Lord. We thank you for the wonderful Bible study that we've had this morning about prayers. We pray that you build our lives. We pray that we grow stronger with your word, Father Lord, today. We pray, Father Lord, you continue to help us, Father Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, for those who are on their way, for those who cannot make it this morning, Father Lord. We pray that we continue to grow stronger. We pray for spiritual growth in the church, Father Lord. Thank you, Father Lord. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.